Well, hey everybody, thank you for joining us for this video. I uh, just want to introduce my friend Donna. Donna is from LCBC, and that's Life Changed by Christ. It's a large church in the Pennsylvania area, and we wanted to do a few episodes on several topics that we think, especially in this season, uh, are very foundational. Uh, hopefully, they're very helpful. And our, our desire over the next few weeks as we roll these out is to really just have this discussion where we're able to share one, uh, God's truth on the, on the topics that we're going to talk about. These principles are not our own. These are God's principles. So we want to reinforce the things that we know have gotten us this far and can take us to the next step. And also really just to equip us. Uh, when we focus on the principles that are in God's word, when we focus on the things that are foundational, then we know that, that it takes us to a deeper level of understanding, a deeper level of, of knowledge, a deeper level of faith and trust in God. I'm really excited about this conversation today because as we all know, with the COVID-19 going on and the quarantine and everything else, fear is what we're going to talk about today has been front and center in so many ways. We've seen it in every aspect of life. So we want to talk about it. We want to talk about what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to react? More importantly, what does God's word say? So Donna, would you, um, let's get us started with just what types of fear do we see addressed in the Bible? Um, yeah. what, what are the two that, that we normally see? Yep. So um, a good one and a bad one. Mm -hmm. So fear of the Lord, um, that's good. Yes. You know, we, we revere the Lord. Um, we honor the Lord. Um, we stand in all of the Lord. So it's a reverence. Um, the bad fear, um, God says it, it, it didn't come from him. Mm -hmm. So if it didn't come from God, then it's not of God and it's not good. And that's a fear that can be paralyzing. It's a fear that, uh, that Satan uses as a tool. Um, so second Timothy, um, chapter one, verse seven, mm. um, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but, and then he names three things of power of love mm. and of sound mind. Good. And all three of those are so, uh, so important when it comes to understanding what we do have. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, because fear itself uh some people say fear is you know one of the acronyms that i've heard many years ago is false evidence appearing real and so much of what we fear isn't realistic i mean it's things that that we think might happen and most of those don't happen but out of the two fears that the scripture uh, is really focusing on is the fear of the lord and then the spirit of fear I, I just want to focus a little bit on the spirit of fear there it's a spirit of fear it's not just fear there's a spirit of fear. This spirit has a purpose, has a goal in our lives. It, it, he or whatever it is, it's trying to move us away from something good to something bad, right? It wants to move us away from trusting God to trusting in ourselves or trusting in anything else other than God. And we know that when we do that, when we trust in anything other than God, it falls short. It leaves us feeling fearful because there's nothing to really support us long-term. Whereas with God, we know all things uh, are, are gonna work out. We know that God is uh, omnipotent, he's um, omniscient. Um, he can do everything and ultimately our, our, his plan for us is good, we know that. So if we can bring ourselves back to understanding that this spirit of fear has a purpose, then we know, hey, this is not just something's happening to me, you know, haphazardly, there's an actual attack that's happening and I need to be aware. I need to know what to do. So what causes fear? Right. So um, our anxieties can really get a hold of us. Like you said, mm. uh, it's a spirit. It can be a powerful spirit if we allow it that power. Um, but I think what causes fear is just uncertainty mm. living in the unknown. Um, all of the what ifs of what might happen. When something um, you know tragic happens, or something um, that would normally cause a reaction of fear, um, it's it's really all of those unknowns. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would say anxiety and fear go go hand yeah. in hand. I think one of the phrases that comes to mind for me is the "what ifs." Right? What if I lose my job? What if I can't pay my mortgage? What if I get sick? Uh, what if? Um, the plan that I made, the investment I made fall short. All of that is really looking to the future and saying, I'm not certain what the future is going to bring. So therefore, I'm going to make a choice. And it is a choice. This is something we need to be aware of. 
we make a choice to worry, and, and actually the Bible says not to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. But we are literally borrowing from tomorrow, right, the, the cares of tomorrow. We're, we're bringing them in today. And it doesn't work because I can't fix what's going to happen tomorrow. I have, I have no real no way of knowing what's going to happen. And I think when you think about it, when you begin to process through the what ifs, it's so easy to then just your mind just begins to take over. And pretty soon your, your anxiety level begins to rise. And there's something else that happens on a spiritual level is your peace, which again, one of the fruits of the spirit is the Holy Spirit is peace, right? This is one of the fruits of the spirit. So when the peace leaves, then we know we're no longer being guided by the Holy Spirit. Now we're being guided by our own thoughts and minds, which are influenced by the spirit of fear. Right. And then it's just a house of cards. Um, you know, anxiety and most, most of the time, anxiety lives and breathes in the future. That's where it's at. That's where all the what ifs are. That's yeah. where all the uncertainties live. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, I think that's specifically why God wants us to be in the present. And when you feel like you're way out there in all in what if world and you're way into the future and all the things that could happen, God wants us to pull ourselves back to today. He meets us where we're at right now. Right. Um, and we have the power to make that, you said it earlier, to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself um, just engulfed in all the what ifs and you feel that level of anxiety rising, you want to just name it and recognize it and say, whoa, 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 th this isn't where God wants mm -hmm. me. God wants me in the present and that's where he will meet me. Um, and then it's a matter of, of putting your trust back in him. Sometimes that's a decision that we have to make. Whoa, my trust like got knocked off the ladder there. I need to put my trust back in him mm -hmm. and get the, get the train back on the tracks. I think it's interesting when, when we face difficulty in seasons, how our reaction um, sometimes is telling. It, it, it's, it will tell on us, so to speak, uh, on where our faith is, what our thought process is, what we truly believe, really deeply believe. And that's really important for us to recognize that our reactions are telling and we need to pay attention. And I think this is really important because I, I remember when, when the kids were growing up, I have two girls that, that are now growing on their own, but when they were growing up and they would have fights, it was the reaction that I would always try to address, right? If, if they were fighting, I would try to find out, well, why are you fighting? And they would say, well, because she said this. And then the reaction was not appropriate for the, for the situation, you know? And I would say, let's talk about why you reacted the way you did. Because if you're not addressing the reaction, like what's deeply down affecting you right now? Not what's the symptom. Um, I may not be able to fix your fight, but if I know why your reaction was so out of character, then we can say, well, you know, you, you two are fighting not because she's, you know, she's barred one of your shirts. You're fighting because of a different reasons. And it's the same thing with us in fear. When fear makes us or reveals a reaction in us that's maybe not faith-based, right. then it's important to pay attention and say, okay, well, why did I react that way? Why did I get angry? Why did I lose hope? Why did I uh, make that decision? Well, it might reveal that the fear of the Lord is not what we're seeking, that we're not seeking him in situations like that. We're really relying on ourselves. And and that's somewhat natural. We're natural human beings. We have a body, we have a mind, and we want to react. But it's so important that we train ourselves. And one of the scriptures in Romans 12 says that we are to transform our mind, right? By the, well, renew our mind by the reading of the word. And this is the way we change, the way we think, right? So our reaction is no longer based on this is happening to me, but then bringing the real information into, uh, into focus. God is in control. I don't have to fear. Um, this is just a temporary situation that will pass. I've been here before. I don't have to freak out. I don't have to, you know, make decisions in the moment. I can slow down and, and address this spirit of fear that wants to push me away from God. In fact, even to the point where I begin to distrust God and trust myself. And that's when we kind of go on the wrong path. So um, when we encounter the spirit of fear, uh, what are we to do? I mean, what, what's the best way to approach that process of, of okay, uh, I'm, I'm fearful. I recognize I'm not at a good place. Uh, what do I do when I encounter, encounter the spirit of fear? Yeah, so, so you're spot on with 
um, what a problem or being in the valley can reveal about ourselves, what's already there, it just gets magnified when, when something like this happens. Right. Um, and so it's very telling and revealing of where you've been all along. Um, there's nothing like being in a good valley or having a, something tragic or you know, um, living in uncertainty to reveal your faith as it stands right now. Um, so for me, when, whenever, I, whenever I'm starting to feel, feel fear, because I think that's a natural human default, something happens, our first reaction is, you know, oh my gosh, you, know, you, feel, you feel fear. Yeah. Um, I think it's really just important, getting back to the beginning of our conversations, to understand and recognize what it is. Mm -hmm. This is a spirit. This is a spirit, and we have a choice. We can either allow that spirit to carry us forward in a very negative way, mm -hmm. or we can uh, recognize it and address it with God and bring it right back to God and get into his word, his living word. One thing is, is it, it's never neutral. You're either moving forward or you're moving backward. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And um, that spirit can really, it is powerful, but God has given us power. That's also in, in that verse. God has given us power. Right. And so I, bringing it to the Lord, confessing it, acknowledging who God really is. He is the, the alpha and the omega. Mm -hmm. We have direct access to the king of kings and the creator of the entire universe. And sometimes we fail to recognize just how precious that access is. Mm. So for me, when I'm feeling fear, it's not bad to feel fear. It's what's bad is what you, like you said, what you do with it. Are you going to let this control you or are you going to recognize it and name it? Yeah, and I think you said something right there at the end of naming it. I think by naming it, what you're doing is you're really saying, this is what this is. You're identifying for what it is. And it's really important because so many times as we embrace this, this fear and begin to kind of go down that path with our mind of what if, what if, what if, then right. anxiety builds, but we don't really know exactly what it is, right? I mean, we're not really cognitively going through and saying, what, where is this coming from? Again, it's going back to the root cause of why we're dealing with it in the first place. And if we can name it, name the fear, name the anxiety, where it's coming from. Once you do that, uh, I think it, it, it removes, first of all, it gives you knowledge, the ability now to approach it much better, but also it gives you the ability to logically see that this is actually not that bad. It de it, it's what I like to call defanging, defanging the monster, right? Yeah. If it just runs away, then you just feel completely overcome by it. But by allowing yourself to have that reaction initially and then say, okay, what is it? I'm going to call it what it is and then say, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. And I think that's very powerful to say, what is the worst that this could happen? And, you know, for, I'm going to go right to the end of this. As a believer, the worst that could happen is we die and, and we're with the Lord. So how bad is that? Um, right. you know, nobody wants to die, but everybody wants to go to heaven, right? Ultimately, it's, it can never be that bad. So if we could defang the monster, name it. And then remember that God has already done so much for us that he can be trusted even with this. Then it puts us on a path of faith rather than fear. It makes us move closer to God, further away from the spirit of fear that just wants to control us and wants us to actually uh, not trust God and move away from him rather than move closer to him. And so. by naming it, um, it's shedding light on it. So the way I like to think of fear um, is if fear were in a Petri dish, it would grow in the dark. Mm -hmm. But once you shine that light on it, it starts to die. And so when you name it, you're, you're shedding, in essence, God's, God's light on it. Um, and there's, there's nothing better than to kill fear than God's light. Mm -hmm. And so um, you, you touched on this a couple minutes ago about sometimes we don't always recognize that that's even what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, I can be an anxiety eater and, um, there's been times in my life. I'm like, why am I just mindlessly snacking all day? <laughs> and it's like, what is wrong with me? And, um, and so once I asked that question, I'm like, oh, you know what, I'm, 
I'm worried about this presentation or I've got, you know, it's whatever that fear is. It's like, that is what it is. I'm, I'm calling it out. I'm mm -hmm. calling it out. It's fear that that behavior, I've recognized the behavior. And now, now I'm naming the driver. The driver of the behavior is fear. Yeah. And then you shed your, shed that light on it and God's got it. Yeah. It's great when you, when you experience fear to remind yourself that everything that we experience, everything that we go through, the, God's word has already addressed it. Yeah. And I'd love to go to, again, going back to scripture because scripture allows me then to have the right perspective, not the emotional, not the what's going to happen, but what does God say? And I can always depend on that. It's, it's, I, I can put my full weight behind that and know it's not going to let me down. So one of those scriptures is in Isaiah 41, and it's verse 13, and it says, I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. See, when I read that scripture, Donna, it allows me then to remind myself, hey, I'm not, I'm not in it by myself here. I'm not alone. I may feel alone, even though I might have a room full of people around me, fear can grip me in that moment. But if I can go back to God's word, and if we can make you know, God's word part of us, then the Holy Spirit can bring it up in that moment when we need it the most and can remind us, you are loved, you're accepted, you, you have a great destiny, uh, your destiny is in God. In fact, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. I mean, it's, it's, it's past tense, this is going to happen. And my point is that it allows us then to allow that fear who has wanting to grip us to fade away. And then the peace of God, which the, the scripture says that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding means it's not something you and I can conjure up. Right. I can't make myself stop fearing, but I can remind myself of the one who's got it so that I can release it. And now the Holy Spirit can come in, bring that peace and allow that fear to be, you know, to be taken away. I cannot muscle it. I got to allow God to do it. Right. Perfectly said. And, and that, that, that Isaiah 41, 13 is, a, I call them gold nuggets. Another gold nugget is Psalms 121, verse 1 through 2. Mm -hmm. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? No, my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. I mm -hmm. just, oh, I love yeah. that one. It's good yeah. because it reminds us, hey, he made the heavens. He made the earth. I think you can handle this little problem yeah. I'm going through. Yes, yes. Um, we have to remember who he is. Yeah. We really do. Um, you know, just, just acknowledging, even if you were to meditate on all of the, um, you know, maybe just five scriptures mm -hmm. of descriptions of God, and it's like, mm -hmm. it, it's and and chew on it, meditate mm -hmm. on it, really let it sink deep, let it get from your mind into your heart right. on who our God really is. And, it, and then afterward, you almost feel foolish for fearing so much or for letting it grip you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just, maker of heaven heaven and earth. What, what, is, what here on earth can God not handle? Yeah. And that's really kind of leading to the last thing that I wanted to, to just touch on briefly. We got a couple more minutes here. But how should a Christian deal with fear? I think we've touched on some of those, but let's just emphasize them because one of the things that we want you guys to benefit from as you're listening to this Take some notes, take something, uh, an action step from this that you're going to say from now on, I'm going to remember this or I'm going to do this. And, and so with that question, how should Christians deal with fear? What are some of the steps that we can give, Donna, so that people can think through a logical way of dealing when fear comes up and they're having to face it? Yeah. Um, so, so for me, I think what has helped so often is, um, like we said early, earlier, recognize that that is what it is and that it is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that spirit is also designed to keep separation between you and God. So the devil does not want you immediately recognizing fear and mm -hmm. then go straight to God with it. Right. Um, so when you go straight to God with it and just confess it, mm -hmm. just lay it out. God, I am living in fear and this is not what you've called me. This mm -hmm. is not how you've called me to live. Um, and just asking God to recall to your, to your mind and to your heart all that he is and all that he will do for you mm -hmm. and relying on God's word. There's nothing better than God's word. And, I, and God's word is living. 
It is living. It's his living word. And, and we, we trust in the living God. And so bringing that to him, but I want to, I want to just touch on the other, uh, we made this point earlier. There is an exchange. Our, mm-hmm. It's our relationship with God. It's true. It goes both ways. So when we lay our fear down and confess our fear and lay it down to him, he then in exchange will do the work inside of us that needs to be done. Yeah. And, and just to know that I'm, there's an exchange here and it's his peace. Yeah. I, I, so let me recap just quickly. So number one, make sure that when you experience fear, you turn to God. You're dealing with the spirit that's trying to push you away from God. What we're saying is the scripture tells us that this is a spirit of fear and that we are to lay our burdens down and we are to go to the Lord. So the first thing is we turn to the Lord and then we confess it. This doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong necessarily. It's just you're reminding yourself and also going to talk to the one person that can actually solve the problem or at least give you a perspective that's going to get you through it. So the next step is go to the Lord, confess it, say, Lord, I'm dealing with this fear. I'm not sure if my job, my family are going to be safe. So would you speak to that? Would you enforce your word? Remind me of your goodness. Remind me of the good things that you've done so that I can put my faith on that, not on what I'm seeing today. And then you, when you do that, the this, this supernatural exchange happens where God lifts that burden from you and he encourages you. He'll bring words, uh, his living word to your mind. He'll give you that, that sense of confidence because it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Peace comes in, uh, kindness, you know, all these fruits of the Spirit are right there with you. And you are reminded, yes, I'm in the flesh and I'm dealing with this in a real way, but I'm not just an emotional person. I'm also a spiritual person and and God can and will redeem all things. And this is no different. If he he was able to bring me into a relationship to forgive my sin and bring me into a relationship because of Jesus's work on the cross, he can handle this. So I love, I love that because I think it gives us a very clear um, reaction. When fear comes, I turn to God. I don't turn from God. I turn to God. Then I confess it. I talk about it. I defang the monster. And the third, I allow the word of God to begin to wash over me. And I spend as much time as I need to. And, you know, remember, you don't defeat fear one time. This is something that's going to keep coming up for us. You keep coming back and you keep practicing the same thing. And allow the word of God to build you up so that fear, even when it momentarily comes, it has no place of going any deeper than a thought. And then it's dismissed and it's gone because your faith is truly in the Lord. Right. And then lastly, um, if I might add that, you know, non-Christians are watching. They're, they're watching us. They want to know, is your Jesus the real deal? Mm-hmm. Let's see how you hold up through this. Let's see how you hold up through, you know, all the, the tragedies in life. They want to know, um, is this Christianity thing really worth it? And so that doesn't mean we're perfect. Part, part of what's great about our testimony to people is we're not perfect. We can relate. Um, sure. And that we do face fear and all that stuff. It's what we do with it. And it's what we get in return from God. And I I just, I feel that we as Christ followers need, we should look different. We Mm -hmm. should act different. If we're acting like the rest of the world that has no hope because they do not have Christ, (laughs) and we do have Christ, that doesn't make any sense. We we have Christ. We have the living God. And so... Let, let, let it be a testimony. Let this time if, with COVID-19 or whatever your valley is, let God meet you there. Whatever's being magnified in your heart, let God deal with it. Um, put your trust in him and, and be a living testimony to the power of his word. Good word. That's a great way to end it. Thank you, Donna, for joining me today and having this discussion. Um, For all of you who joined us, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to be with us today. I hope this word encourages you today, that if you've been dealing with any kind of fear, that what we talked about, the word that we shared with you, can encourage you today and help you to live the kind of testimony that the world will notice. Thanks again for the time that you spend with us. We'll see you next time, uh, next Friday, when we'll do another one of these. So have a great day.